Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. On his deathbed, there was an elderly pastor who was preparing to write his final will and testament and preparing to, to leave this world and go to the next. And as he uh, composed a final letter, he, he actually uh, he, he was thinking to himself, what would be a memorable word to say? What would be something that would stick in the memories of his friends and his loved ones, in his wife and children, with his wife and children? And as he penned his lines, he closed out his letter with, soon I will leave this land of the living to enter the land of the dying. He erased it. And he corrected it. And he wrote instead, soon I will leave this land of the dying and be with the land of the living. How true that pastor understood that this world is a, day, is a world where we each day is the day that we are dying. From the time that we are born, we are moving towards our death. From the time each, single, each day that we live is a day that we're living with dying, isn't it? And this pastor understood this very well as he penned those words. He understood that we lived in a sin-filled world that we have sin-broken bodies, that we are people who at some time will experience the wage of the sin, which are death. Those are words that a pastor says, but those are also words that we know to be true. We know that those words are true in each and every day, whether, whether or not we think about it, because we know those words to be true in a very real way, or sometimes in a not-so-real way, when we see life ending all around us. Sometimes in a very real way, though, it's when we think about each day, and maybe it's a day that we struggle with a de disease that we know will never be cured. We live with dying when we hold the hands of a mother, a father, a grandmother, a grandfather as they, as they near death, as they su suffer from a chronic disease or severe disease. We live with dying each day as we think about the heinous crimes that are committed, the things that people do. And as we think about it, we think about the way our world responds to living with dying. And our world struggles with this, doesn't it? It struggles with this idea of living with dying. In fact, we, when we talk about the word for compassion, it literally means to come alongside someone in their suffering. But when the way our world understands it is that compassion is just a quicker death, a shorter time in this world, free from pain and suffering. And if you don't believe me, Think about those, that phrase, I would be better off dead. It's a very common phrase in our world today. It's a very common phrase among people who are suffering in the cancer wards and people who are suffering in nursing homes. I would be better off dead. And in 2009, Frontline aired a, a program called The Suicide Taurus. The Suicide Taurus followed one man, Craig Ewart, who is a a mathematician in the United States who believed he would be better off dead. It followed him as he made the decision to partner with a Swedish firm to end his own life. In other words, assisted suicide. He was been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS as it's known. And so he talked to his wife and he talked to his children and as the cameras rolled, you, you wondered what was, whether or not he would go through with it. As they aired this program, you thought to yourself, will he really, until the very end, as he took the cup of poison and ended his own life, at least his own earthly life. Craig Ewart believed he would be better off dead. He did not see that life in this world is a gift from God. He did not see that life in this world is, has purpose, has been given to each one of us. All he could see was that his pain was overwhelming. And so instead of prolonging his life, he'd rather die. He did not know that there is not only the earthly life, but there is also eternal life as well. Before you judge Mr. Ewer too quickly, think about your own lives. Perhaps none of you have ever said those words, I'd be better off dead. Perhaps none of you have ever considered assisted suicide or taking your own life. But how many of us in our own words sometimes feel that way? I'm just a burden to my family. There's no use for me anymore. I can't do anything that I used to be able to. Why doesn't God just call me home? Maybe some of you have uttered those words or heard others utter those words. I know I certainly have. 
In fact, just a few days ago, as we kissed my grandma Mueller goodbye, as we said goodbye to her, she, had, she in much the same way said those words. Why doesn't God just take me home? With grandpa gone, and why doesn't he take me home? There's no purpose for me here on this earth anymore. And maybe you do know those words. Maybe you've thought about those very words yourself and they've, and, they, and they've been in your heart and you've wondered what you could still do. Let's look at Paul for just a minute here. Because Paul gives us some words of hope and he gives us some words of comfort. See, Paul, Paul as he wrote to the church of Philippi, was a man who was suffering. He, as you probably recall because we brought it up recently, was a man in prison. He was a man who was not sure. But listen to the words that he said. To, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He understood that no matter what happened, that it was in God's hand. Now, don't get me wrong. Paul looked forward to his own death. He looked forward to what would be greater and better. Those are the words he uses. But he also understood that if it wasn't God's time for him at this point, that it wasn't time for him to go home. Paul knew that as long as God kept him on this earth, there was a purpose and a, and a reason for him to be here. And as he lived with dying, as he lived with each day that God gave him, notice where he ends up. Notice as he looks at God's plan for his life, he ends up realizing that God still has a purpose for him. That God was still going to use him and that God was not ready for him. And as we look at our lives, sometimes it's easy to go down that road, isn't it? Sometimes it's easy to start to wonder, what more can I do? My eyes don't work like they used to. My hearing is gone. My, my hands, they, they get cramped up and I can hardly move them in the morning. I have to take medication each morning just so I can get through. My knees barely drag along. And even for those of you who are, who are younger, you know that even if your, your bodies aren't giving out on you yet, even if you aren't past your prime, as the world says, if there's enough that weighs you down and enough pain that our bodies feel that sometimes we even feel that way, that we'd be better off dead. But Paul gives us those words of hope. Paul gives us those word, those reminding words that we have been knit together and formed in the womb for a purpose. We are not just here at a random time in this world and in this life. You are not here randomly today, but God has put you here for a reason. God has put you in each place in your life for a reason. He has taken you through the difficult times in your life for a reason. He has taken you through the joyful times in your life for a reason. And each and every day, He continues to shape and He continues to form you. I know that my grandma feels like she is ready to go. I know that she feels like it's her time. But God still has her on this earth for a reason. And what an insult it would be to Christ to say, well, Christ, we don't care what your plan is, but we're just going to call it at our time. What an insult it would be. No, as long as we're here on this earth, He has given us the opportunity to honor Him, to praise Him, to glorify Him. And it may not be in ways that you even can imagine. Sometimes it's, it may be something as simple as those words of encouragement. Maybe it's the fact that you are good with, with tools and you're able to, to work with tools to build something for someone else. Maybe it's the fact that you can sing and glorify the Lord. Maybe it's the fact that you're a beautiful artist. Or maybe it's the fact that, that you are able to work with the human body. Each of you, God has given you a gift. He has made you unique and He has formed you so that you might live this in this world to bless others as He has blessed you. For to live, that is for Christ. That is for, for Christ Jesus. To die, yes, it would be better. And we all, we should look forward to that day when we join our Heavenly Father because He does make us a promise. He promises that He will wipe away our tears, that He will erase our pain, that He will strengthen us and lift us up but in those hands that He lifts us up with. He lifts us up with scarred hands, with nail-pierced hands. He lifts us up as He carried out the very purpose of the Father for each one of us. Because you know that even as He knelt in that Garden of Gethsemane, even as He, as he, shed, as, as he, as he shed those tears and sweat as though it were blood, that He was carrying out the will of the Father that all might have life. As he, as he bled and died, as he allowed his hands to be pierced, as he allowed 
his blood to run out as he allowed, as he gave his life for us. He carried out the will so that all of us would have life. Because in this world, we are people who fail. We are people who break God's command. We are people who fail to honor God. We are people who get caught up in, well, who we should be instead of who we are. And we forget, no, that God uses each one of us wherever we may be. And you might say, as Paul, as, that Paul was a great missionary, that Paul was a great apostle for Christ, that he traveled everywhere, and there's no way that we can travel in that way. But remember Paul's own words. Paul himself said that he resolved to know nothing among the people of Corinth except for Christ and him crucified. Paul realized that it was not about him, but it was about what Christ was doing through him. And it is not about, not about you, but about what Christ is doing through you. And as you, people of God, think about where, God, where Christ has placed you in this very moment. I encourage you to think about where Christ might be using you today, where he might be using you this week, where he might be using this, you this year. Because you are not here without purpose. You are not here for some random time, but you are here to carry out God's love, to carry out his mercy, to carry out God's mission in this world. Several years ago now, and kind of making a coming back, but there was a book that maybe you are familiar with called The Purpose Driven Life, written by Rick Warren. And Rick Warren wrote this book to address something that many people have a question of in their life. And that is, what is my purpose here? Why am I here? Why am I still here? What am I doing here? And well, there's several things that he and I might have a discussion on someday in heaven, but there's one thing that he gets right, and that is we are here to serve God. God has given us life on this earth to be, to be his, his people, to be his children, to serve him and to carry out his will. God has given us life on this earth to affect our community wherever we may be, to change the life of our neighbor wherever they may be. And God has given us that life. And until he calls us home, he will continue to hold it in his hand. He will continue to walk with us and he will continue to carry us. He will continue to guide us and he will continue to lead us. Until one day he is truly exalted in us when we are exalted with him in heaven. Now there's one more thing we need to look at. And at times it's hard to know when when it's our time or when it's not our time. And it's, it's hard because we look at this life and we have to wonder and we struggle with that question because we are imperfect. Whether God is calling us home and more should be done or whether we should just stop. And that's a difficult decision. That's a hard decision no matter how far along someone is. But we put that decision in God's hands. And the, what we remember is Will it cause death or will it affect death? And the reason we look at it that way is because as long as God gives life, he has continued to sustain that person or those persons, then we are not causing death. But when he takes that life away, that is the effect. And uh, maybe you remember several years ago now, but you might still remember the case of Terry Shavo. Terry Shavo was a woman in Florida who had a severe brain injury. Her husband and her parents they went to all the way to the U.S. Congress to, to fight about whether or not they should remove her feeding tube. Terry Shavo was, was living with a feeding tube. As of March, March 31st, 2005, she died. When the coroner did the report, they said she did not die of a severe brain injury, but she died of severe hydration. Her death was caused. Now that being said, that does not mean that God could not work to call her home. That does not mean that she was any less a child of God. In fact, even as her death came, the Lord welcomed her because of her faith into his arms. As we look at life, as we look at that gift of life that God has given us, we need to look at those times and we need to place those those decisions of life and death in our God, in his hands, because he has sanctified all life. 
He has made all life holy. He has made life holy from the time that is conceived in the womb to the time that, it, that we are 95 or 100 or 110 years old and everywhere in between. God has made each of those days holy and he has made each of those days worthy. And so, you know, there's many times in our lives where we might just wonder if we're a burden to our family, where we might ask those questions if there's any purpose for us still. But I pray that you would in those times remember that God always has a purpose for you, that Christ saw you as worthy, worthy enough to give his life on the cross, worthy enough to give you new life so that one day you might walk with him throughout all eternity. And as we say with the hymn writer, hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. In life and death, O Lord, may Christ be glorified in each of us. Amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you for the life that you give us each and every day. We thank you that you have made our lives holy and that you have set us apart. And we pray that each day we would live for you. Lord, reassure us that as long as we have breath to breathe, as long as you have given us life to live, that we can share your love with others, that we can glorify you in our lives. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be with those who are weak and those who, who, have, who feel as they have no purpose. Send your Holy Spirit to be upon them. Lift them up and reassure them that they are your children and that you have given them that new life for each and every day. Lord, we pray that, we, that as we go forth each and every day, that our lives would glorify you in what we say and what we do. And this we pray in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.